Donald chose Lake Bonnie um, after, I guess, some persuasion by the local council at the time, and his ambition was to create the land and water speed record within the same year. Uh, he chartered an Aero Commander 680F uh, and um, arrived at the Barmer Airstrip, uh, just a dirt strip in those days, with uh, much fanfare, and uh, the world media was here uh, to uh, welcome him. It created quite a buzz in, the, in Barmer and, in fact, the whole Riverland and South Australia got behind it as well. Uh, when the Bluebird arrived, of course, uh, there was uh, much um, public um, demand to see the, the plane and the Rotary Club uh, actually uh, raised some money in uh, allowing people to get close enough to the Bluebird to see it uh, and touch it on a first-hand basis. The whole uh, atmosphere was just uh, electric. I was president of the Water Ski Club at the time and um, uh, they considered that I had uh, an intimate knowledge of uh, the lake. I was invited to drive the command boat, which was uh, Erringham, just the same as my father's. It was a very demanding time. Uh, we would be getting up at uh, 2 a.m. in the morning and meeting at uh, Bishop's Cafe for uh, breakfast. We were given the briefing uh, particularly on the weather forecast for the, the day and, uh, and from that determined what we were going to do. My role was to um, gun the, the boat as quickly as possible and, and uh, get to the, uh, the crash site if it occurred. And that uh, was quite on the cards because the whole functions of a, uh, a hydroplane is that they ran uh, at speed on a cushion of air and on the day that he uh, made the Australian record of uh, 216 mile an hour on the 23rd of November um, there was a, uh, a, a swell coming across the lake from the high river at the time and when the bluebird actually came through it, it was um, leaping out off the water about every uh, 50 metres which was um, quite unnerving for Donald Campbell. Well, he could see that um, he was running out of time because he wanted the world water speed record by the end of December. And uh, because of water conditions at Lake Bonnie, he um, had received word that there was a longer and wider lake over at um, Western Australia called Lake Dumble Young. Out of the blue, um, Donald came to me and asked me, would I uh, be interested in going to Western Australia uh, to see whether it was suitable for an attempt over there. To uh, be offered a payroll to uh, participate in the whole event was uh, quite a buzz. A town was born out of the wheat paddock and a um, generator was put in and 240 volt power was established and then we, all we had was radio contact between Dumble Young and the lake site. Certainly the town was uh, no different to Barmer. Uh, the townspeople were very uh, supportive and enthusiastic, so I was left alone, uh, which I didn't mind because uh, uh, I was too busy to worry about anything else. Uh, Lake Dumble Young still had uh, the same problems um, that uh, uh, Lake Bonnie at Barmer had. The Australian shell duck um, was molting at the time. My first comment to the authorities was, we're going to have every duck in West Australia on Lake Dumble Young. We did use guns uh, to scare them off and the ducks soon learnt to keep away. We had a lot of wind. Uh, occasionally, when the, um, the Albany doctor came in, it would um, there would be a lull, and we'd have a chance to make a, a run. And I needed to get back and, uh, and take my, my business again. And from around January of uh, 1965, uh, Donald arrived, flew back into Barmer in his plane. Donald never liked anyone wishing him luck, but when he landed and uh, hopped out the plane and we greeted each other, I said, Donald, you're one lucky person. You got the world record on the last day of the year. 1964 was a leap year. You had one extra day. And then it dawned on him. He had that window of opportunity on the 31st, late in the afternoon. Everyone was uh, very elated. They, he broke both the world records within the same year and achieved his goal. Uh, Donald, I think, was um, uh, really over the moon. He was very, uh, very, very happy man. I have many enduring um, memories of, of Donald. The man was a legend and a gentleman, and it was very uh, pleasing to work with him. When you sit down with a man and you have a beer with him and you socialise, and he's no different to anyone else. That's the true measure of a, of a man. I just felt that it was great to have the opportunity that I did as a 24-year-old, something that I've lived with and met with memory all my life.